Hi everyone, it's Louisa from Aligned by Louisa B. And I wanted to share something with you um, that came up for the, me this week in with one of my clients. And it's a, a tip that my coach shared with me. And I just think it's the most freeing thing ever when we have that little voice inside our head that says, you can't do this, or you're not good enough, or you're stupid, or you're daft, or you're this, or you're that. This inner critic that gets very loud often. It could be, you know, you're not good enough. It might make excuses. You can't do that. You haven't got the time. You haven't got the money. You haven't got this. We kind of, when we're buying into all of that stuff, we are um, uh, and believing what it's saying because it's just a voice in our head. Who is it? Uh, can you imagine if you had a person sat across the other side of the room who was saying the things to you that are going on inside your head? You'd probably want to, you know, <laughs> tell them to get lost in a very polite way because it's some of the stuff is just not nice, is it? And over the years, I think often what happens at the beginning of our journey, we're so consumed by all of that. And our journey when we are kind of on the personal development, spiritual path is really to begin to unwind all of that stuff, you know, unwind. Why is it we're saying I'm not good enough? And then we heal the part of us that feels, you know, like it's not good enough. And then the voice gets better. There's healing to do with this work. But one of the things that my coach shared with me years ago, uh, a lady I worked with for a long, long time, a mindset coach, and she was like, you, this voice that you've got in your head, you can't, what most people do is they argue with it. So it might say, well, you're not good enough. You can't do that. You're stupid. And then, and then you're in a voice, you. So imagine that voice is a part of you. It's not all of you. And who is that? Where's it coming from? Who is it? And then the other part of you goes, well, yes, I am. And, and then you just get into this internal mess of fighting and arguing. And we can't argue with that voice because that voice is a part of you. And that voice wants to be heard. And that voice usually comes from a part of us that needs to be healed. And it's usually fearful. It doesn't want you to do the thing because it goes against your subconscious beliefs about, you know, say if you're growing your business and it's money and you can't do that. You can't put yourself out there. You can't show your face on social media. You can't, you know, um, raise your prices or whatever it is because your subconscious pattern is saying something completely different and there's a conflict. There's usually a conflict in there. So the best way, obviously, is to heal, to figure out what's going on and, you know, why maybe you're an overgiver and all your life you've overgiven to X, Y. You know, it's really, and it's different for everyone. Everyone I work with has these different patterns. Uh, for me, it was definitely I'm not good enough. Sometimes people are overgivers. Sometimes people, you know, believe that having money is bad and being successful is bad and all these bad things are going to happen that never happen. Um so rather than getting in a fight with the inner critic, hear it. OK, so little voice pops in. You're not good enough. You can't do that. OK, I hear what you're saying. It wants to be heard. I hear what you're saying. I get that, you know, you might believe that to be true. But you know what? I perhaps maybe I'll, I'll give it a go and I'll see what happens. And, um, you know, I'll come back to you if it doesn't work out. And you can you can tell me then you can kick my ass then. Mm. you've just diffused it don't uh argue with it don't defend don't prove yeah don't well I can I have and I have no it's not gonna like that either it just wants to be heard hear it write it down what is it saying to you what's it trying to tell you it's a little part of you that's freaking out because you're probably about to do something the opposite of you know its pattern it's, you know, the um, the pattern that it's created. So if you have created a pattern of the overgiver and then you want to go do something for you, that often creates a right old confusion and a, 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 because you're in conflict. Two parts of you internally are battling it out. And often that can manifest as confusion and, you know, overwhelm and doubt and all of those things. It's, you've just got two parts that are having a battle. And 
I think for me, it's one of the most valuable things that my coach ever taught me. Because yes, I've done a lot of work on myself over the years. Do I still feel self-doubt? Yes. Do I still feel fear? Yes. I'm a human being, the same as you. But I have the tools to be able to go, oh, I recognize what's going on here. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Awareness is key because most of the time people are going around, they're running on autopilot and they're just believing this voice and they're just going, okay, I'm not good enough. I won't do that thing or whatever it is. So we do the work to unravel that story in whatever way, whether it's coaching, energy healing, you know, all of the EFT, all of the forms, wonderful tools that we have to be able to uncover this stuff. Um, but that's one of the ways you can reduce mental. I would always say, do the healing work, find out what that part needs, find out what needs healing. And from that, it's going to get easier. But that trick that I've just taught you to not fight with it and to hear it and to be, okay, you might be right, actually. You could be right. I could go and do this thing and I'll, I'll look stupid and someone will be nasty to me on the internet. But you know what? I'm going to give it a go. I'm just going to give it a try and see how see what happens. And I'll come back to you and let you know how we get on. It's such a simple tool, but it's so effective. So I wanted to share that with you today for those of you on the newsletter, because I just thought it's so important that we are not a slave to this. Who is this voice anyway? It's a part of you. It's not all of you. There's another part that's going, yay, go, let's go do this thing. This is so exciting. Oh, my God, I can't wait to do the thing or whatever it is. There's another part of you, but what happens is the part that's giving you a hard time is loud. That's your ego voice. And the part that's like, yay, let's go and do this thing, is so, it's, it's often very, is drowned out by this loudness of the ego and it's all of its fears and it trying to make sure everything's in its control and the doubts and the all of that stuff. That's loud. And when we begin to do the healing work, when we begin to look at all of this stuff, bring it to the surface and heal it, that loud voice gets a lot quieter. And then your soul voice can come up. And we learn through intuition and quiet time and meditation to listen to this voice. This voice is so beautiful. This voice feels so good. This voice ego voice doesn't feel so good yeah and that's how on our journey and then we can learn to live with all of the parts and hear them yeah I hear you self-doubt part I hear you part that has no confidence I hear you but we're all right and you can then move forward and create success in whatever way so I was working with a client this week and we were doing this work we were, we were looking at um you know uh her the, what was going on for her and I shared this with her has a way of her I have to give people soul work work to do after their their coaching or human design reading to help them and this was one of her her tools that I gave her to take forward so I wanted to share that with you in the hope that it would help you anyway I'm off I will see you all very very soon I'm sending you lots and lots of love bye for now